Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make this belt sander better with 3D printing. Not too long ago, I did a Maker 101 video about Fusion 360 and how you could model something to fit on an object in the real world very easily. You guys seemed to really like that one. There was a really good response, so I thought we would do it again, but this time introduce some new tools in Fusion 360 that will be helpful to you to get started modeling something. And to do that, we are going to take a cheap but pretty effective tool and make it a little bit better. This belt sander works pretty well except for one major problem. The dust collection port on this makes no sense. It points straight down into a metal box. There's no way to put anything on it or hook a hose to it. It's just pretty useless. The other problem is that the hose in my shop vac is actually way larger than the port on this tool. So today we're gonna go into Fusion 360 and model something that will connect to the tool, change the angle so that I can connect this hose to it. Very simple, but it's something you will probably run into in your shop at some point. Through this process, I'm gonna show you two new tools in Fusion 360 that are small, but they make a pretty big difference. Just like last time, the first thing you gotta do here is measure the real world objects. You have to figure out how big they are so you can create a model that fits around them. So in this case, we have two things we have to measure. The outside diameter of both of these pieces that need to be plugged together. I use some very cheap digital calipers to get the outside diameter of the dust collection port and the hose on the shop vac. These are both standard size hoses, they just happen to be different. I also had to measure the distance between the end of this port and the metal box. That'll tell me how much space I have to make the adapter fit in and be able to plug onto the port. All right, let's head to Fusion and model this thing. In Fusion 360, you almost always start with sketches. These are two-dimensional shapes that you turn into 3D objects. I started by making a circle that was the same size as the port on the sander and then extruded it into a small cylinder. The depth of this is how much I wanted to overlap the existing port. 90 degrees to that surface, on a different plane, I made another circle the size of the larger hose. I extruded it into a cylinder as well, and then used the Move tool to move this new shape off to the left. Now here's the new tool. This is the Loft tool. You select Loft, and then two shapes, and it creates a new body connecting those two shapes. This is a great way to connect two things that are at weird angles to each other, and you don't have to specifically model it. And here's another really cool new tool. This one's called the Shell Tool. And by using it, it takes your body and creates a shell out of it, hollowing out the inside. If you drag the arrow out, it makes it larger than your original shape. If you drag it in, it makes it smaller. And by doing this, our original interior measurements are preserved on the inside of these openings. I also dressed up some of the corners, just playing around, making them a little bit smoother using the Fillet Tool. And that's really all there is. There's not a whole lot to this model at all. I selected this shape from the list on the left and then right clicked on it. And one of the options here is save to STL. I've got mine set up so that STL file goes directly to my slicing software which is called Cura. And from here, I can set up all of the 3D printing stuff and in this case I did really low resolution, the quickest build I could make. I printed this at low resolution because it's a utility part, it really doesn't need to be anything specific. I also printed this in PLA. When I print out the final version, I'm going to use nylon so it will be even stronger, it'll last a little bit longer with wear and tear. But for now, let's test out how this design worked. The first thing I noticed is it is a very tight fit onto this hose. It will go on if I stretch it a little bit, but I should add a little bit more tolerance on the inside of this so that it can come on and off a little bit easier. This one actually fits really well. So once I get the adapter on the end of this hose, then I can plug it into the dust collection. That actually fits really well and it fits in the gap that I have just barely. The fit is tight enough on here that unless I actively pulled it off, it's gonna stay on there even with the tool running. So it works as it is, but it could be better. I'm gonna go back into Fusion and make a couple of adjustments. I'm gonna show you that while I talk about it. One of the coolest things about Fusion 360 to me is that it's parametric. And that means that it's all based on the math and relationships. So if I go back to the original sketch of the circles made for this piece and move them around, change their size and shape to make the hoses fit better, it will update the rest of the model to make those changes for you. This is great because if part sizes change or your design changes, you don't have to start from scratch every time. You can usually go back to the initial sketch that was made to shape a piece, modify the sketch, and everything past that point will update. The main changes I'm gonna make here are about moving this hose away from the machine. I'm gonna take its opening, pull it further out of the machine, which makes the adapter a little bit bigger and a little bit more rigid, and this will allow me to keep the adapter on the sander even when the hose is not in there. 
As it stands right now, I have to put the hose on the adapter and then kind of feed it in to latch onto the machine. But since Fusion is parametric, I can make all of those changes and iterations and just reprint another version to try it out. So there's another quick and easy project that most people that have shops would actually take advantage of, and anybody can make this in Fusion. And even if you don't have a 3D printer of your own, there are services where you can send out a file to get printed. So if you need something like this, you can model it yourself, have somebody else produce it, and send it to you to use. I hope you're finding these small little videos helpful and give you little bits of information about Fusion or about the other topics. If you've got some stuff you'd like for me to cover in this format of video, let me know down in the comments. That'd be awesome. If you want to see some projects, I've got a lot more of those over here for you to check out. And don't forget to subscribe. Also, hit the bell down there so you get notified as soon as I post a video. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.